Oh no! Beta! Here I go, more Betamax. This is Sony's SL5000, I believe from around 1981, the first front-loading Betamax VCR. And uh, yeah, this I bought, when I bought the SL HF400, I bought this one as well as a bunch of other stuff. It all came together. And this one is in much better shape. It's like it's never been used. Uh, I did a quick inspection on the inside before I bring things in. I always do that. The screws had never been removed. Like, this has never been opened. For better or for worse. Uh, I, I think the guy I bought this from had powered it on and tested it. But I have not done that yet. So I've got a movie. I've got the remote beta scan. And I'm just going to try it and let's see what happens. So power. Step one. Ooh, that's it. Oh! Uh... Tuner sounds like it's doing something. First step, will it take a tape? Well, it won't load the tape. So that's probably belts. This thing's old enough. Check that out. Looks like it was made with a label maker. All right, four screws on the sides and we're in. Look at that. There's not a speck of dirt. Get some light in here. Barely any dust. I've never brought home something this clean before. It smells like old electronics that have been sitting in a box for almost 40 years. So take this shield off. All right, that was four more screws. So there's a motor here. Now, I know nothing about this machine, but I'm almost immediately suspecting that this is gonna have a belt to drive this, but uh, let's see. Is this do anything? I don't know. Let's try that again. Please stand by. Yep, upon closer inspection, this belt right here drives that piece, and you can see it's slipping when I go in. I don't know how well this will come off on the camera here. You can see it's trying, but that belt is slipping right in there. Let's see if we can do one more view here. Yeah, no go. All right. Step one, I need to find some belts that will work well enough in here. Of course, I'll be ordering the correct belts, but for now, this is a uh, exercise of getting this thing working. All right. In the meantime, I was able to just give this a little spin, which helped it load the tape once I gave it a push past the hard part. Loaded up nicely. So, ooh. That sounds like a very unstable speed. Like the servo. Okay. So it's on pause? Why is it on pause? Huh. <laughs> that idler's barely working. Rewind. 
fast forward. Oh! Okay, play. So now, what drives the capstan on this? Is it driven directly from the video head drum? In which case I could see that causing a problem here. So I'm just going to stop that. Also, this looks a little off kilter. Look at that. I'm sure that really shouldn't matter, but it's interesting. I'm going to take a look on the bottom side here. The wife and mother bit, you understand? It's okay really? for you to shake this. You, you didn't want this in the first place with me. I'm a man. I'm the man who needs to watch you. Yes, right. So, I opened this up so I could see what's going on on the underside. A couple screws, and I had to remove this little cover on the back for the PCM switch that was there, a little rubber cover. Then this can just sort of work its way in and fold down. And I can see all the belts that need replacing. This belt isn't too great. That belt's not too great. This belt for the capstan is just like awful. And what it looked like it was doing, this was spinning, but it was waiting for the, the video head drum speed to stabilize, which it seems to be getting better. But the reason it was paused, like if I hit play here, see it, it pauses. Oh, see it was waiting for the video head drum to stabilize and it's not stabilized. You can hear it. Now, from what I've read about this model, see it's, it's staying on pause and then it waits and eventually it will release the uh, pinch roller and go clink and start playing. But it waits a long time for that and I think it's waiting for this to sort of report a stable speed for all of this to report a stable speed and yeah it's definitely not now from what i've read about this model is bad caps plagued with apparently blue sanyo bad caps i don't know i'm gonna go looking doing some digging some reading and maybe spot check a couple this will definitely need a recapping if these were known to be bad and this thing's like never been used. Uh, okay, interesting. It's not actually starting to play now. See, it did that before, but again, that could have just been a fluke. Because uh, now it's just staying in, in pause. But yeah, this is, despite it being minty in box it's definitely going to need some work to get it in service but it is well worth it i don't know if this will allow me to oh yeah okay now oh now it's trying to play the place that they never let him in the didn't let him in i did Oh, please not, Darcy. He's an animal. He's a murderer. He, he's public enemy number one. Might be an issue with the pause. Maybe, maybe that problem's not on purpose. Weird. So I can do that. I can do that. Gotta love beta scan. It doesn't it's so quick because it doesn't it just uses the two reels so it just like it is not a consistent speed through the captain like vhs it, at least in these old models it just sort of free spins i remember um spats bear did a video on a zenith uh rebranded sony talking about that and it's neat because you just hear all it does is just disengages oh Got a spot of color for a second. Interesting. So, hmm. I'm going to kind of play around with this a little bit. See if it'll work its way into life after being stored for so many years. But uh, I'm definitely going to order a belt kit and start spot checking capacitors. See if maybe there's anywhere online that does like a, a capacitor kit because that would save me a lot of time.
I'm also wondering about this. I mean, that's probably related. Capacitors can kind of mess with everything. And for those who want to smell along with me, this has the same smell as, imagine a cheap, cheap, cheap particle board, 1970s stereo, the kind that had the built-in turntable, perhaps an 8-track player, had one small circuit board like this, and it was all built-in particle board, the cheap of the cheap, and this has that smell. I don't know what else to say. Just, you know, if you want to get the whole experience of this machine. Aha! Just as the internet has told me. Blue Sanyo capacitors that apparently were known to be bad. Total Sanyo. It's like that SDK5441, I think, that the newer Sony Betamax VCRs used. Sanyo part. Sanyo fault. Just, come on, Sanyo. Anyway, this board, I'm going to link to a video there that is like 11 years old and was very helpful. It's also a quick blurb on that Betamax Collector's website saying the same thing. I am going to go look and see what capacitors I have in stock and if I can replace these without doing an order. And then we'll see if we can get it running. Then I'll order a belt kit. And then it will be perfect. Perfect. Okay, I, I just noticed this and I want to make a note of it. See how it says simulated wood cabinet? All it's referring to is this, like, decal sticker thing. Like, this This is the simulated wood cabinet. Here's, here's the cover. I mean, this is just silver. This is just painted metal. The only simulated wood is this. And they, they put a sticker. They put a sticker to say that. I, I guess to so people would know that this isn't real wood. What? Nope, I do not have enough stock to replace these as is, so I'm going to be placing an order. Which works out. I got other stuff I need to order for. This project is way past due. I need to order new potentiometer, or potentiometers, I can't remember. Got to order caps for that uh, Zenith VR4000 power supply. Redo that one. Uh, I should really look at my list. There's a bunch of stuff I need to order. Well, it's better. I think I just need to adjust all the settings to get rid of this rolling and sink it in. But man, is it ever working better now. For one thing, I have color. There's all the, uh, where are you hiding? All the bad caps. So, yeah. Wow, she's working beautifully now. Tested beta 2 and 3 so far, haven't gotten to beta 1. Adjusting, I guess you'd call it the freewheel speed. So if I hit play, this is a beta 2 tape. Alright, adjusting this freewheel is a pain in the butt. But I think I've got it pretty good on beta 2 and 3 at this time. So I got it paused on a beta 2 tape. Hi, John. Fast forward, have a picture. Chin, guys, language. It's like how you I got the sack. Heavy. Rewind. And no matter what I do, it's slow like that. And uh, that is a good picture. So this guy here, this middle one, seems to affect how quickly the speed will return. And I have it bottomed out to the left. Anything further to the right gets worse. This one seems to lock in the actual playback speed. Further one side prefers uh, beta 2, and then the other side prefers beta 1. you got to kind of work it in between. And then this one... I think this one was only on beta 3? I can't remember. But uh, yeah, this one had an effect as well. But this one is all the way. So this one I have adjusted best for both. This one's kind of right in the middle between the two but I still can't get it to like the mo I have it sitting for a while Heavy, the that time it, it locked in okay there we go Eddie, you can't play so I still got some work to do I gotta really play with this but I mean 
great picture, great sound. So, good so far. Well, as soon as I stopped filming, the Beta 2 tape was working just great and wasn't doing that. So, let's see, this is a Beta 3 tape. I was using music videos, which I'm not really going to show much of at all, because, yeah, reasons. But it's very good to get the playback speed exact, because I can just, you know, play a copy of it. Rewind. So I'm going to say that's good. All that's left is the beta 1 adjustment, which I'm going to do. And I think there's one more Sanyo cap I saw on this board, uh, 22 0.22, that I'm going to replace anyway. Uh, it's in the chroma circuit. The color seems fine, but I mean, it. <laughs> If, if those were bad, then that blue Sanyo will also be bad. So why not replace it? Look at this sort of shakiness in the color on uh, Beta 1 playback here. You can really see it moving back and forth there. Um, I haven't sort of adjusted so it'll work. I mean, as, as good as it's going to get, I think. Um, tracking for this recording has to be all the way to one side, but that could just be the machine that it came from. Although, Sony is Sony, right? Got a new loading belt on there. Everything else seems to be okay. I'm gonna see if I can find a capstan belt, although this one's doing pretty decent. Um, I'd still like to replace it because that will affect the, uh, overall playback quality. Any speed jitters will cause weird stuff, so... Uh, but yeah, otherwise, new loading belt in. Beautiful. I didn't uh, have exactly the right belt in, so this is a bit of a thicker square belt than what this is meant for, which I think will cause a bit more drag. But no, it seems to be working fine. Also, regarding replacing this belt, if anyone's doing this stuff, I highly recommend you buy I think this is called a spring hook. It's meant for installing springs in, I don't think this goes back to like the old typewriter repair days, but it's got a pusher. So you can push things in, hook them and push them, or you can hook them and pull them. And installing belts and little clips and things like that, this is amazing. Uh, I grew up using one of these when I was repairing stuff. My dad had one. And then um, I think you can buy them on like Amazon or wherever. I don't know. But seriously, get yourself one of these. I've watched people use screwdrivers and stuff and it works. But this works so much better. And now we get to the demonstration part. The Sony SL5000. So this thing is absolutely immaculate. I feel like it must have been used because it... Like, stuff was taken out of the packaging. It didn't have all the original plastic. Uh, it did have... Oh! did have all this stuff and the original box and styrofoam and stuff. But, like, this doesn't have much use on it at all. It's got a mechanical uh, push button. Electronic tuner. Or capacitive tuner. I don't. I don't remember what these are called, but there's the ones that you can electronically tune with uh, soft controls. It's a physical mechanical deal. Uh, you have your timer record switch. Interestingly, when you push this in, it physically stops the power switch from latching in. So I push that in, push it out. But if that's in, that pushes it out. Now, I believe it'll stay on like this because I don't have the clock set. Saying the clock is super simple. You can't really do it one-handed here, but you have to look at a little pin push-in clock. You can set your hour, uh, 10 minute, and minute. And then once you're done that, you can set your turn on and your turn off timer. Very, very simple setup. You have a weird pull to the side record switch. I believe this was being sold as 
The left side is for recording, the right side is for playback. Super simple. Because all your recording and timer recording stuff, aside from power, is really over here. You're recording from channels. All of this stuff is, is recording related, except for tracking. Yeah. And then over on the playback side, you have your mechanical tape counter, program select, turn this back on, BTR or TV, so this powers on the RF modulator on channel three or four, rewind, play, fast forward, stop, eject. So this is, um, machines of this era, I don't remember a lot of them having stop and eject on the same button. Saw this on a lot of audio cassette players and later, VCRs like well into like the 90s but from this era like this is not very common to me anyway uh, pause freeze frame so this does have beta scan and uh, freeze frame and then down here you have the connection for the remote camera pause so if you're connecting the camera to this it'll have like a, a pause switch built onto it that'll be able to control the pause on the VCR microphone input audio in, which are both three and a half millimeter audio jacks, which Sony did in these early machines, and uh, video in. Very simple front. You'll notice that the record speed isn't on the front here. There's actually a switch on the back for that. And uh, yeah, this unit came with everything. And for those who are not very familiar with this kind of tuner, the idea behind it is that uh, like this came after those old physical dials, those knobs that you would tune and it would click into a station. And what this had is this had presets. So you had, in this case, I believe 14 presets. You have two to 13, but then you have two additional ones. And what you can do is you can say, oh, okay, well, on broadcast, my station, my city doesn't have channels six and seven, but it's got a bunch of UHF stations you can tune these six and seven presets into something else or even cable channels or same here. So you can put all your favorite cable or broadcast channels in here. And then they came with extra numbers. And the way this works is on the side here, you can pull this little rail with the numbers out and you just pop that number out and put your new number in. And this is old enough that UHF went all the way up to 83. I believe in like 1983-ish or something, they segmented off the top part of the UHF band and it only went up to 69. So newer electronics, but this is old enough that it went all the way up to 83. And uh, newer machines, so this one, let's look at the setting here. Yeah, so this doesn't have, it might overlap a little bit with VHF and low and VHF high into the cable band a little bit, but it doesn't expressly say it. So newer ones with this preset tuning, you could tune in uh, cable channels as well. And in the early days, those cable channels were lettered. So you had cable channel A up to Z or something. I think the first round of cable channels went up to 36, second went up to 48, I think, or 49, and so on. So yeah, they. This, this type of tuner was around on low-end VCRs, I think until like the late, almost the end of the 80s, it was, it was used. And you just ended up with like more presets, uh, they're soft controlled obviously, so there was just a little like push button similar to these, just a momentary push button and you could change them with the remote, you could tune in cable channels. Anyway, so this has the push button tuner and the extra numbers. This also came with both, I did this, yeah, that was me, the English and the French manual. I would say magnetoscope, but I'm going to butcher it because I'm an anglophone. Warning, to prevent fire or shock hazard, do not expose the unit to rain or moisture. Yeah, it's good advice. Wait, what? Note on operating voltage and frequency. Type one model, okay. 
Oh, so this is a, a universal enough manual that there's the PX mod model uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, where you can actually change the operating frequency. So what in this requires the 50, 60 hertz? There must be something in this power supply that provides an AC signal, like maybe for this clock. Maybe this isn't a quartz locked clock. That's... That's insane. Anyway, something, or no. No, the motor for the video head drum on this has got to be DC at this point. It's got to be like servo controlled. It is, it is, yeah. So I don't know why it would care about 50 or 60 hertz, but that's interesting. All the advice with the cartoons. Connecting an antenna. Get your nice Sony TV. It's a pretty decent sketch. Yeah. So VHF antenna, UHF antenna connection. This has separate um, connections for VHF and UHF. Later models, when especially when cable TV became a thing, they just put them all in one connection that separated internally. Uh, combination. Yeah. So if you have one antenna coming in, you have to separate the two. <laughs> How to attach an F-type connector to coax? And the things he had to do back then. Connecting it to the TV, so you have your VHF and UHF out, passing both the antennas through. If your TV is old enough to have the two 300 ohm screws, use the little adapter to go from 75 ohm coax to 300 ohm twin lead. Caution, connections between the recorder VHF out and the antenna terminals of the TV should be made only as shown in these instructions. Failure to do so may result in operation that violates the regulations of the FCC. Oh yeah, because this has an RF modulator output, so if you hooked it up to your antenna on your TV, or your antenna on your roof, your neighbors might end up seeing what you're watching. Captions and PCM switch. Caption of TV programs can be recorded and played back with this recorder when a decoder unit or a TV des designed to receive closed caption signals is connected. PCM recording and playback can also be made for caption programs or PCM playback. Set the switch over. That's interesting. So this must allow extra information to be recorded in the vertical blanking. So this opens up, I think there's like a little filter. I remember hearing about this. There's like a little filter that blocks some information or doesn't allow and flipping this switch will allow that information to be recorded. Oh, it's error correction. There's probably some, yeah, there's a bit of error correction in the picture and this turns it off so you get a direct feed to the signal on there. Cool. Connecting a color monitor to obtain high quality picture, connect with these outputs. If you use a component TV tuner together with the monitor, when it says component, it means like each of these are individual components. It doesn't refer to component video standard. Connections to a cable TV system. Not really going to go into that, but there you go. Adjusting the TV, three, channel three or four, your controls. Check. Yeah, setting your tuner. So here's instructions on how to use that. Uh, I might do a video on how to use these. I see a lot of people like, I just assume everyone knows what this is, but but a lot of people have never experienced the uh, these type of tuners. So this will play back all three beta speeds, which I've tested, and it will record on two of them. Pretty standard for Sony. I believe all their VCRs even the lowest end consumer ones could at least play back beta one. What? What is this? Ah, it's in French. It's a quick guide. What on earth is this? Oh, this is how to set your clock, how to jump on top of it. How to connect a thing. I'm sure that's the unit that connects to your camera and your camera plugs into it to get power. Yeah. Beta scan. 
your remote switch on the back, which I'll get to. Hmm, cool. Oh, and a one-year warranty. So, yeah, time to demonstrate this. Put in a pre-recorded movie first. Watch the timer as it pulls the tape out. As Betamax VCRs do, it loads the tape as soon as you put the cassette in. It's got this little indicator because this is in the very early days of front loading. I swear that just looks like it was made with a label maker. Hit play, automatically switches on the RF output. Now we have picture. And uh, yeah, see the tracking is go doing that. Oh, that's because I have the tracking knob off. It seeks a lot. Doesn't really find where it should go. Um, I recapped this thing and had to readjust all the controls for like the servo speed and the free 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 freewheel or whatever they're called. And I didn't quite get it right. I'm probably gonna go in and, and readjust them again because I'm not really happy with it. In fact, this is acting worse than it was before. Anyway, here's beta scan forward, beta scan backward, which is instant. I love that on these machines. I didn't even get color with backwards there. There we go. See how it's seeking like that? I think I'm gonna let this run a little bit because as I've been using it, the it's been moving a little bit. Um, where I had it adjusted is no longer good. Uh, let me just adjust the tracking. Here we go. That's where I want it. Pause. Fast forward. And this also came with the wired remote. Now it's interesting, take a look at this connector. Now you'd think with this little jack down here that oh that's a two and a half millimeter jack like like the audio cable but it's not because what I have here is a Toshiba wired remote from a slightly newer model and if I take this and plug it in here it it doesn't stay in it'll work so the buttons are slightly different it'll but it'll do things but it won't stay in and that's because it is a different connector this is a weird proprietary thing that Sony did I guess like I, I don't I don't know but plugs in stays in and now I can sit on my couch I can control my fancy visual features my trick play features cool and then Eject. Now I can try a beta 3 tape. That's so noisy. This thing's a noisy, noisy machine. Recorded from probably 87, 88. Fast forward, rewind, but see the tracking goes in and out there. It has to seek a little bit for the right speed. Pause. Sometimes you get a real clean pause on this, on both beta 2 and 3. And I think that was an advantage with beta, only having two recording speeds, is that you could design your video, your two head system to be real close between them. Whereas with um, VHS, even if you just had the two speeds, you had to somehow find a common ground between them. And like the faster speed would obviously lose out with, with the design of a two head system. Whereas on here, you don't really have to worry about, you know, beta scan on beta one. Sound on this will probably be pretty bad because it's on beta three. Yeah. Beta 2 sound on this though is amazing. It's very nice. I mean, it's I guess what you'd expect for a pre-recorded movie. Mm -hmm. 
Now, it's time to try a Beta 1 tape. Before we try the Beta 1 tape, let's just look at the back side here. So this is your video output and your audio output. Now, this is just really, I think it's really only held to the circuit board with the solder of the terminals on both of these. And if you have a real beefy cable like this, it puts a lot of stress on this crappy little connector. I don't think this is really meant to be used much. And if it was, it would just sit there. You're not doing what I'm doing and moving it around all the time. But yeah, this, I gotta be real careful because this I could see being a fail point. Little rubber cover here that covers that uh, captions PCM switch. So I can try playing with that while we're playing a tape back to see what it does. It's your model, SL5000. Your UHF and VHF connections. And this compared to the older Sony's has just a built-in RF unit. It's not separate, it's not preset. You can change it. And here is your speed switch. So here's where you set your record mode and playback if you're doing beta 1. So all the way to the left, it'll play beta 1 and or play beta 2 and 3, but record beta 2. Move it, and it will record beta 3, but play back beta 2 and 3 again. And then if you go to beta 1, oh, that was in the middle. If you go all the way to the right, it will only play back, and it will... Uh, playback beta 1, but not these two. So it goes into a whole separate mode where it won't, it'll just play beta 2 and 3 back at a, a fast speed. So I'm going to need a beta 1 tape. I, this, this says beta 2, but it's in beta 1, so I don't know. Whee! Take a second to get video, and I believe... With this recording, I had to turn the tracking all the way to one side. There we go. Come on. Uh, now watch, it's going to act up a little bit here. You have to play with the tracking. Because this is a beta 1 tape, there really is not a... Oh, there we go. I had to go to this side. Okay. Because it's a beta 1 tape, this really... <laughs> these heads are way too thin. The gap on the head is way too thin for this recording. So, for example, at pause, I mean, you just... <laughs> You lose the picture altogether. Same with beta scan. This machine was meant to play back a beta one tape only if you really need to. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean that's all to show really on a a beta one tape. <laughs> Do a rewind scan. Looks kind of like a two-head VHS VCR on SP. So let's see what happens with a Beta 3 tape. Grab that Beta 3 tape with the Beta 1 switch on. So many solenoids. Sounds glorious. The picture is also really weird. That's bizarre. You would think that the pause and stuff like that would still work the same, but it looks really weak. Almost like a different amplification, like a weaker amplification. See, it's all weird like that. Anyway, plays back. plays back very fast, and if I put beta 2 in, one could assume that it'll play back slightly slower, but still too fast. Yep. But again, see the picture is really dark. Is that... No, it's not my video connection. And if I flip the switch on the back here, yeah, look at that. So that's beta 2 playback. It goes to beta 1. So there must be something else going on with this. Either 
There's a problem with the Beta 1 playback on here, and it's got this darkened picture. Didn't really look like it much for the Dolly Parton. Or is it just such a hot signal coming from a Beta 1 tape that it has to turn down the amplification on the video circuitry? I don't know. If anyone knows, let me know. That's interesting. Let's hit play. Hey, hey, cafeteria. I don't care if she's going to marry J. Edgar Hoover now, will you tell me? What is that? So let's flip the PCM switch. Does nothing. PCM switch did absolutely nothing there. So I think there's just a bit of video stabilization or correction circuitry in here that might mess with PCM audio because you just want a direct feed and to do your own error correction. And the same thing with captions, it might interfere with captions. So that's just a switch to turn that on and off. And lift and down two more. Oh. Exhale, Woo. inhale. Last time and oh. down. Now extend the bottom leg, oh. lift it up oh. and down. Oh. Up oh. and down. Try to keep that inner thigh muscle facing the ceiling. 